Hey guys, so I'm waiting for it to show up on Facebook. So it's going to be a little slow start. Hi, welcome to our how to take care of your baby at home hands to paws style. This is Claudia from Hands to Paws streaming to you on from StreamYard on Facebook, on, I believe we're on Instagram, Rumble, YouTube, and welcome to our live free educational stream. So if you don't know me, my name is Claudia, and my pets are a macaw, um, two cattle dogs, and a Pyrenees border collie. And they like to be really antiky when I go live. I'm still waiting for it to show up on show up on my Facebook. I might have to jump out and jump in just because I want to get it out everywhere. Hey, Brittany, are you saying, hey, girl, hey, hey, Lisa. Oh, good. So we have some activities. I'm super excited Lisa's here tonight because we're going to discuss a really common experience that um, her and her dog Precious experienced today. And I thought it was so important that I went to the salon to get props for tonight. Let me try this again, see if it's come up, because I definitely want to get this streamed out. Hey, Britt, I know you have a headache, love. Do you have any of the um, local groups in your phone that you can? Ah, oh, there it is. Hold on. I might be able to do it. There we go. All right. So just give me a minute, guys. If I had some music for you, I would play you some music right now. I am going to post this around we are in citrus county florida that is where our brick and mortar our storefront is so i am posting that around our um, community so people in our community can see this live and then of course no matter where you are you can enjoy and learn from this information. So just give me a minute because all these things happen to be in my phone because I have collected them for a couple of years now. And it hurt, it helps our algorithms the more people that watch and comment, comments definitely help the algorithms. Hitting the like button, giving a heart. Any of those help our algorithms. So if you enjoy the free education, hit those things. We will have paid for seminars where you can interact with me personally and ask me questions personally we are working up to that we want to make sure that we are consistent with our every other tuesday night um post so you can count on us almost done here guys almost done Some of the groups will accept it and some of them won't. Um, in this group, we have created a store on Facebook and our lives are now over on our web page, but the store is not yet. So anything I discuss tonight, I want you to know that you can jump on Facebook, go directly to our store and look for these products so hey guys hey what's up dog are you on youtube because our youtube channel is called what's up dog hey dan what are you doing how are you so one of my dearest friends from my childhood is on um live tonight and they have a saint bernard that goes on the subway in new york how exciting is that 
All right. So I'm going to give you a little story. Let's start with tonight. So I'm not mentioning, I'm just going to mention the dog's name is Precious and the dog, her, um, she can be very territorial. What does that mean? Territorial is a type of aggression. It means I'm going to protect my territory. What is included in territorial aggression? Moms and dads. So if you come into hands to paws and we're greeting your dog and we bend down to say hi to the dog and we touch and your dog to check out the condition and say hi and see how their ears look and their eyes look and how they feel, that dog may potentially at you. And what they're telling you is to get away from their parent. That is considered territorial aggression. In other dogs, some dogs, if they have like a chronic ear infection or they have um, a, a knee in a dog is called a crucia. Let's say they have knee issues, which is very, very common, or they have a pain issue. Stylists are not medical professionals. However, experienced stylists will know when a dog is having pain, right? They're going to work around. The dog is going to communicate. How does a dog communicate? They communicate through sounds and noises that they're making. And some of those sounds and noises are warnings. One of those warnings is, that's right, let me hear you say it. Hey, Lindsay, what's going on, girl? Hey, Ren, what's up, dog? <laughs> One of those um, warnings is a growl, right? So I've talked about the growl twice in two different scenarios, not all scenarios. One in territorial aggression, your dog may consider, we could all that call that protective too, right? Being protective, but I'm going to term it as territorial. And that is get away from my parent. I'm going to protect. And the other is a warning that as a stylist, somebody that's working on your dog with potential invasive procedures, it could be a warning that hurts. When do I see that most commonly? I see that most commonly when we're doing a dog's nails or ears. So I'm, just hang with me here because I'm going to explain this the best I can as quickly as I can. So with the feet, if the dog has joint pain, okay, or skeletal pain such as arthritis, and I hold that dog's foot out like this, which if you watch any of my nail things, you'll I'm always talking about this. You don't have to go back and watch. There are plenty of lives if you want to, but I'm going to explain this where you don't have to go search for another live. If I pull the dog's foot out and I'm now causing joint pain, the issue isn't about getting my nails done. The issue is about being in pain. So at hands to paws, we're always talking about the skeletal structure and listening to the dog. What does that mean? That means the dog is saying, giving me a signal, he's growling, ow. And I'm going to say, oh, uh, this is what I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say, oh my God, what's the matter with you? I'm just trying to get your nails done. What I am going to say is maybe if I tuck the leg in, will that make the dog fit, feel better? Maybe if I hold the foot out this way, would that make the dog feel better? Or maybe if I flip the foot backward, would that make the dog feel better? Because it's about the skeletal of the dog. If it's not um, an association issue, okay? This is if it's a real pain issue, not a negative association issue. A negative association issue is I had a very bad experience and I'm pre-guessing that you're going to do the same thing. All right. So a growl is absolutely a warning. It is, I'm not talking about a vicious growl. I'm talking about a growl that is letting you know, I really don't want to have conflict with you, but I'm willing to let you know that I really don't want to have conflict with you. And I'm going to growl and let you know, I'm going to communicate how I feel about the scenario. All right. So now maybe, maybe it's an ear issue. So in this case, this little girl that I'm talking about is a Cocker Spaniel. Cocker Spaniels in particular have, are notorious for having ear issues. And we're going to do another ear lie very shortly. We've done one on our services. We've done one on nails. 
we've done one on de-shedding. You'd have to, if you're interested, have to go back and watch them. We're about to do another ear one. But the dog's ear canal, depending on the breed, is somewhere around here on their face, and their ear canal goes upside down. So your stylists and your groomers, they don't really give your dogs ear infections. In fact, we don't know that your dog potentially, first of all, we're never veterinarians, so nobody should be giving you medical advice other than uh, Miss, let me, let me just excuse this, Miss Precious, Miss Lisa Precious is wonderful once she gets to know you. So that's great because Precious is wonderful all the time. However, Precious, being a Cocker Spaniel, doesn't like her ears being messed with. Does that have anything to do with her experiences? No. Does it have to do with that she doesn't like um, air in her ear when she's being blow dried? Yes. Does it have to do with that she has potential for ear infections and she's sensitive? Does anybody have a sensitive ear, right? And that it's potentially pain. And her way of letting you know is to growl. Now in Precious's case, she, so I've known her since she was puppy, so she will not do this with me. I will just say no, and I'm going to do this, okay? And she trusts me. Let me make myself very, very clear. Hear me very loudly. Brittany, are you listening? I know you love Precious. Dan, are you listening? Lisa, where are you, Lisa? Are you listening? Trust. Trust. Not that I'm doing anything different. I don't have any magic fairy dust. That dog does not question her trust in me. She never questions it. If I tell her I'm not going to hurt her, I am not going to hurt her. I'm going to say it again. She doesn't question me. The other thing I do with Precious is I can mark a behavior. So the minute she turns to me, and don't think she doesn't growl at me, Brittany. I don't know why you think that she just doesn't. Everybody thinks I got magic fairy dust because I don't. She does growl at me. The difference is, is I mark the behavior. What does that mean? It means the minute she gives me, we call it in Precious, the skank eye. Okay. Everybody, anybody know what I'm talking about? This guy, I give a great skank eye. Mm -hmm. Skank eye. Mm -hmm. You know what my skank eye looks like, Brittany? Lisa, you all seen it. Precious gives the best skank eye. That is warning number one. Warning number two is her lip will come up. Okay. Warning number three is she will start to growl. Warning number four is a snap by the hand. Okay. They're warnings. They are warnings. Well, when a dog snaps at your hand, you think they're going to bite you. <laughs> period. Period, 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 period. I will do a whole nother live on what a dog bite actually is. And you don't even think you need that, right? But you'd be amazed. There's five levels of biters. And Precious is not on any of those levels. What you say, she doesn't let anybody touch her ears. That's right. Because they do not mark the unacceptable behavior and they haven't gained her trust. And she has been being groomed since she was a puppy and she has basically made this a game. So if you don't think dogs have a sense of humor, think again. She's made it such a game that over the years I've had to warn Precious to be nice to the staff members and warn the staff members that if they if they heart went skip three or four beats to go ahead and put her up and not push the issue until they had developed you ready for this big word relationship why is relationship and trust and marking a behavior the number one three keys taking notes now because a dog is very unlikely to bite somebody that they have a really good relationship with, that knows how to communicate, mark behaviors. I like this. I don't like that. And they trust. Relationship, marking a behavior, and trust. And if a dog has been experienced something or has learned something and they know it works, just like a human being, the living organism is going to do what they know what works. All right, so let's get to my actual story. 
precious went to the vet today and she came home with a red eye that could happen absolutely why did it happen in precious's case it happened in precious's case because precious has learned learned behavior okay i'm going in a kennel i'm going to growl i'm going to snap medical professionals are not going to tolerate or risk that behavior they're going to muzzle your dog okay there is a new veterinarian wave they call it fear free and the veterinarians and the vets literally have to take a course on fear free you'll know it if your veterinarian has it because they'll have it marked on the front of their clinic and people will be proud that they took this course they're supposed to opening it up to stylists we do kind handling which is basically fear free being taught by me to all the employees on how to handle the dogs i shouldn't say employees they're staff members or team members they are hands to paws beat they are the heartbeat so that is called fear free just for your knowledge so now precious has escalated to that point and they're not going to tolerate no most medical veterinarian practices are not they're going to put a muzzle on your dog okay every people don't want people their dogs to bite anybody precious's mom does not want precious she's incredibly conscientious okay i have a dog aggressive dog i do not want my dog i don't want my dog scaring anybody okay it's bad manners period uh veterinarians they're technicians groomers and stylists we work with our hands okay it is very important that we are not bit so i do not at any point want to send a message that anybody should put themselves in danger of being bit okay so now they put a muzzle on the dog the muzzle's in the office i don't know correct me if i'm wrong lisa um she's a little stinker she is um is uh is she was there for i believe four or five hours so we have something in the salon called a groomer's helper and what that is is it goes on the arm of our stations and it connects to a noose where it holds the dogs very much like a gentle leader where it holds the dog's head in position without putting any pressure on their trachea what that does for a groomer or a stylist, <coughs> excuse me, is it keeps the dog's head from being able to turn around and use their canines to bite us. Okay. So we can get some invasive procedures done minus a muzzle. Can you see that? All right. That muzzle. Okay. Now, if the dog. The dogs can, which I'm not going to do all this tonight, but the dog can learn a lot of different skills in order to be combative. And of course, the number one skill is the mouse. So let's say we have the dog on the, because we really don't want to muzzle. The reason at hands to paws, we really discourage muzzling is because dogs that have had a lot of muzzling become something called muzzle wise. So, you know, they can see, smell, and they experience, right? So the minute they see this piece of equipment, they get upset. Their anxiety goes straight up. I'm doing that so you can see it. I don't know how to get, I apologize guys. I didn't know how to get my, this background off. I tried before getting on as better as I'm getting. I still don't have it all down. That's real important because I'm going to show you why this muzzle is the one we use at hands to pause. So we might have to use a muzzle. Let's say that dog's just being, inc don't think dogs aren't dramatic. Oh my God, you're killing me. And we're not. So let's say the dog's just being very dramatic and it's just noisy or the dog's spitting and he's just having a temper tantrum. Um, let's say he's six months old and doing that, which is completely normal, especially if you're a schnauzer puppy. And you need to put a muzzle on the dog, all right? Or let's say we have the groomer's helper on and the dog is finding that incredibly um, 
uh, combative, we're going to take that off because the last thing we want is that dog's anxiety getting higher and higher. Why? Because then the dog's chemistry is changing and the dog is going into freeze, fight, or flight. And once the dog is in fight, you, you need to stop. Just stop. Let the dog calm down. Take a breath. Let the dog, you know, kind of get their bearings and then proceed again, right? Trust, trust. You wouldn't want to be put in such a panic situation without somebody stopping. So now you go into the vet. So we might have to put a muzzle on. What kind of muzzle? What kind of muzzle was on Precious today? I'm going to give you my opinion, my educated opinion, that she was in a muzzle that she could not break out of and she couldn't open her mouth. And I'm going to give you that opinion based on a red eye. Okay? It means that, so if her muzzle's on tight here, it's holding her mouth shut here, her little cheeks, let me see if I can do it for you. <laughs> That's ridiculous, right? But her cheeks would be puffing out like that for breathing. Okay? And let's say she got upset in the, the, the kennel and she puffing her cheeks and she's going like this. And this muzzle is literally holding her mouth shut. I've been doing this since I was 19 years old. I am a grandmother today. And the reason I developed the systems I did in Hands to Paws so I didn't rewrite any books, okay? I studied with the best of the best, but I have brought in some very strict policies. This is the kind of muzzle we use at hands to paws. Now you say, Claudia, my vet doesn't have that muzzle. See it? Your vet doesn't need the muzzle. Go buy it. It's your dog. Get the equipment that is the best equipment so that your dog can have the best experience. I'm letting you know, most vets, depending on the practice, depending on the grooming salon, depending on the boarding facility, depending on the individual pet professional and company you're going into, bring your own equipment. Buy it. It's worth it. Baby, it's worth it. With that said, I have under here, we have opened up our store on Facebook. It's not on our webpage yet, though our lives are. But please, anything I discussed tonight about home care for your dog, please jump on our Facebook, jump on our store, and go find the products I talked about. So, owners, do not leave it up to your pet professionals to have the correct piece of equipment for your dog. Do not make an assumption. Can you see it? Okay. So let me show you why this muzzle is different and they are not expensive. They are not expensive. Can you see the mesh on the side? Can you see that the dog can open their whole mouth? Okay. That dog can open their whole mouth. This dog can curse me out. Okay. It does not make the dog quiet. Okay. I know at hands to paws, we're never interested in making your dog quiet. We might put them in a quiet area where we can see them. So they're always under our eye. So we know anything that's going on, but we are not trying to stop noise. Sometimes it's noisy. Dogs are noisy. Dogs are noisy and messy and sometimes destructive, but God, don't we love them. So you can see the mesh on the side, okay? If I unsnap that, can you see? Oh my God, this camera, I'm so sorry guys, I couldn't get that off. Can you see that the dog can now drink water? Can you see that? The dog's tongue could come through here. See, it was done with a snap, okay? So why this muzzle? Why is this the only muzzle you will find at hands to paws? Okay, because I'm not saying anybody's above being muzzled. And I am definitely not saying that people's hands and their safety don't count. And the medical professionals are not going to take a risk. That, that looks so much better, Lisa says. 
it's hard to see the muzzle. I know, guys. I'm sorry, Lisa. I'm very sorry. Can you see it better? Let me see if I can get up to the camera. It's my background, and I could not get it off. I definitely did my best. And then the dog, I can take this part off. Let's say like Precious was today. She was in a kennel with a muzzle on. Okay. She was cared for. She was under supervision. Nothing wrong with what they did, but she should have had this muzzle on because then she could have had a bowl of water in her there with her. She could breathe. She can open her mouth. See, open her mouth. Blah, 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 blah. She could bark. She could pant and she could have water. All right. So that's that I thought for home care tonight was I did that help you beautiful Lisa I hope that helped you so why did precious come home with a red eye today because she was on a muzzle that kept her muzzle closed or her little cheeks were puffing out she couldn't open her mouth to pant she couldn't bark and it created some pressure all right and is why and it, I am not making any negative statements. Veterinarians and their technicians have to keep their hands safe. Um, and they're not behavioral consultants. That's not, they're there for medi medi medical. But as a owner of a dog, if your dog, like my dog is, or like Precious is, where they have some idiosyncrasies, or they're territorial, or they're showing protectiveness, or they have something called cage aggression, which means it goes right in that territorial loop where they're going to protect where they are. You need a muzzle on to get the dog out in a medical situation. Bring your own. Go on to the hands to paw store and look for a muzzle, okay? All right, so I wanted to bring that home tonight. I'm sorry, I did try to have my props. I could not get this background to change. Let's get busy at Groom Homing Baby Basics. So Baby Basic number one is the muzzle. If you think your dog is going to bite you, if you think you do not want your dog escalating to that point, but if you think that you or the person that's helping you with whatever invasive procedures you're doing at home, needs a muzzle, please have the appropriate, correct muzzle with you so your dog can breathe, open their mouths, and do what they need. And obviously, here are our links to the store. We're working on the store every single week, so it'll get better and better. So when I do these live demonstrations or you come into the store, you can, and we show you because we're very an educational facility and we believe in giving the best service and we don't believe this is secret information, by the way. All right, so Facebook and you can go to our store. All right, is that cute? It's almost like a precious Lisa. Look at that. And this this um, sprayer that they're using on the dog looks like the sprayer that we use for our CO2 Nagayu skin therapy tabs. That's exactly what that looks like. So when you're bathing your dog at home, <coughs> when you're bathing your dog at home, people go, well, how complicated is it to give a dog a bath? Well, a little more complicated than you realize. So this is, I'm going to do this as quickly and efficiently as I can. We live, I am here in Beverly Hills, Florida. And in Florida, we are tropical and we have a lot of humidity and a lot of heat. So we tend to, in this area, have a lot of problems with fleas. Um, in other areas, and I don't know where you are, and if you're watching this from somewhere else, please drop. I love to hear from people. Um, I also dropped a StreamYard link in there, um, if, up in the comments. If somebody did want to come up and chat, feel free. Um, 
in other areas, fleas tend to be more seasonal. And fleas only live on your dog 10% of the time. The other 90%, they are in the environment. So it is really important when you're washing a dog that if you in an area or in a home that potentially has little critters that breed unbelievably and are very hard, difficult to kill, that you give your dog the correct kind of bath. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to start from the face and we are going to use a face safe shampoo. Where's Brittany? Face safe. Say that fast three times. Where's Dan? It's face safe, face safe. See? Come on. Somebody else do it besides me. Save face, face, face. You're going to wet your dog, starting from the nose, moving backwards. If your dog did have fleas or other types of infestations, you want to make sure that they are moving up and away and back from your dog's eyes, ears, and mouth. So you're going to take your face for the safe for the face shampoo because you want to make sure that it, this is safe. Okay, and we were talking about a red eye in grooming salons. If you're not using a shampoo that's safe for the face and the eyes, you can literally burn their eyes. Do not do that at home. Take the moment, take the time. What is safe? A hypoallergenic at hands to paws. We do a beautiful blueberry exfoliating face wash, and it is safe for the face. You're going to start from the nose. You're going to go backwards, making sure you get in the jowls right in here. They like to keep food in here. Go back. You're going to cover all the little areas that bugs like to go in, including their ear canals. You're going to go back. You're going to soap that dog up. And then you're going to rinse that entire dog. Rinse them down. And you're going to do it again. So here are some shampoos that we recommend and this ice and ice. And these are some tangling products that you can spray in the dog to help get tangles out. As in Precious, who's a cocker, face safe. Good girl. Say it. Practice it, Brittany. Let's see how we can do it. Face, face safe, face safe, safe for the face. Um, that we can talk about if you have like Precious is a cocker. She's in a shaved down haircut right now because she doesn't like her knots being taken out. And she becomes angry when she's getting her knots taken out. What we have learned in Precious's case, and not in just her case, in lots of cases, that this is actually an underlying health thing. And the pulling on her can cause her extra pain. And she literally cannot tolerate it. It's painful. So, I mean, God bless the dogs that are so stoic. But we have her in a shave down right now. But if she had knots, we would use this ice and ice. We would use this other spray. And these are some of the shampoos that we would recommend. I'd also recommend Burt's Bee, which I love. I love Miracle Coats. And these are all on the store. Okay, so they're detanglers. All right, so we're on that second bath. And while my dog is wet, can you see that, guys? You can go and get this on the store. This is a Chris Christensen dematting brush. Its cost is about $15. Buy two or three. Buy two or three. When your dog is wet, especially if you have a long coat dog, any doodle people out there? Hey, doodles. Is it a, everything you don't like about a poodle is a haircut? Everything you like about a doodle is the poodle. Is it a golden doodle, burner doodle, labradoodle, Aussie doodle, boardy doodle, sheep a doodle? What kind of doodle? Do you want all that coat? Do you love that teddy bear look? Is it teddy bear-esque? 
Do you want to keep that coat? Do you want to go to the stylist and have them tell you to shave down the dog because it's a big mat? What's a mat? A big knot where the skin can't breathe and can cause skin problems? Is that what you want? A naked poodle or doodle? Some people do, and that's okay. Is that you? If the question answer to that question is no, Chris Christensen, $15, jump on our store, buy more than one. This is what I call, and I believe Chris Christensen calls it a dematting brush. Okay? Does not look like an instrument of torture because it is not an instrument of torture. It is a dematting brush. In fact, it still has some lovely dog hair in there. Okay? Chris Christensen, dematting brush. Now, you haven't rinsed your dog yet. You are on the second bath with your dog. The first bath, you started from the face, went backwards. You scrubbed the dog up. You rinsed the dog completely. You took away all the dirt and oil from your dog's coat. You used dog shampoo that was right for your dog's pH balance. You did not use human shampoo that is designed for a different pH balance. It matters. Healthy skin, healthy coat. Unhealthy skin, unhealthy coat. Please always use dog products. That second bath, the dog is all soaked up in face for the safe shampoo, starting from the nose, going backwards. Now we're going to take this beautiful dematting brush by Chris Christensen. And don't quote me, but I want to say this brush is going to be under $20. Let me say that. Under $20, probably right in the $15 range. Buy three. You're going to either, unless you're very organized, you're going to misplace it. The dog could take it. You need it if you want to keep that coat. You're going to take this brush. That's really a problem. You're going to kind of hold it sideways. You see my fingers up there? My thumbs in position. And you're going to go directly to the skin. Directly to the skin. Brittany, say it with me. Directly to the skin. What's up, dog? Put some skin in it. To the skin. What does that mean? That means from the scalp out. When you're brushing, you're combing your hair. You do not just do this part unless you have a perm. Okay? You're not just doing this part. You're from the scalp out. Skin out. Otherwise, especially on doodles and poodles and little dogs with long hair, they get a webbing right by the skin. And if that webbing isn't separated and removed, it turns into mats. What are mats? Knots. Knots where the skin can't breathe and can cause unhealthy skin. You're going to brush the dog while the dog is wet. Okay. See how I'm holding it? I'm kind of at a sideways slant, okay? And I'm at the skin. I'm at the skin. If your dog has knots, you're going to hear. Okay, I'm going to make sound effects. Here I go, Brett. You ready? That's what it's going to sound like. You're going to be able to hear it. It's impacted coat that is webbed, that is turning into mats what are mats mats are knots and you want to get all of that out okay i right, listen we want to see your doodles in our salon three times three every three weeks we want to help you maintain that coat we want to have teddy bear ass dogs we love coat at hands to paws we do not want to have to charge you 25 dollars an hour to demat your dog okay and once your dog gets to a certain point, they may or may not be able to handle it. Remember, I started the story with Precious. I've been grooming Precious since she was a baby. I'm very aware of what she can tolerate and what she can't. And in Precious's case, she has a mother that listens. So she does what's in best interest of her dog and what she can tolerate. But some people really want, it is important to them to have that hair. And that is okay. 
So I'm going to brush it while it's wet. Why while it's wet? Why while it's wet? Because when it's wet, it's open. Let me see if I do my hand. It's opened. Okay. So I want you to think of like a wool sweater. When it's wet, it's opened up. And when it dries, it closes up and it tightens up. So it is harder to get that knot out when it is closed. When it is open, it is easier to get to that webbing, to those mats. What are mats? Mats are knots. Why are mats and knots bad? The skin can't breathe. Why is skin so important? Healthy skin, healthy coat, unhealthy skin, unhealthy coat. Okay? So I'm going to go through it while it's wet. While it's wet. Okay? Let's go back to our... That makes sense to everybody? I hope that made sense. Okay? So you're going to do the two baths. One for dirt and oil. Face safe. Nose backwards. First bath, dirt and oil. That's all you're doing is getting off dirt and oil. Second bath, cleanliness. If you have a dog, a doodle, a poodle, a dog, a shizu, lhasa, okay, Yorkie, Yorkie with a long coat, beautiful drop coat, okay, you want to brush the second bath while wet to separate your coat. Okay, super important. I'm not against you bathing your dogs at home. I want to help you. All right. And if your dog is prone to knots, not bathing all the time, you're doing in between. I recommend ice and ice. I recommend any of these products that will help get D-Max knots out. What you don't want to do is saturate the dog and leave it so wet, it'll create a worse problem than not. All right. So let me come back here for a minute. Well, let me jump through here real quick. Okay. So I'm going to jump up. Well, am I going to jump ahead here? Okay. All right. So I'm going to backtrack a minute and then jump ahead. So hang with me here. getting better. Sometimes I just get a little slow there. I'm also going to recommend, this is also a Chris Christensen. Okay. So I showed you the Chris Christensen dematting. Okay. Does not look like an instrument of torture because it is not. And I'm going to show you a Chris Christensen. Do you like how it still has dog hair in it? This is my brush. I literally ran to the salon today and got it. Chris Christians. And I have a better picture of it on the slideshow that Sky made. Thank you to Sky, who puts together all our presentations and is my social networking partner. She is going to have a business of her own and make a fortune. Smart, smart young lady. So there. Does that do it? Oh, man. Try to figure this. Okay. So that's a cushion. These pins are very long and they're downward slope. So they're meant to catch the hair. They are great for poodles, doodles, or any drop coat. And they will help fluff out and brush your dog. I did not bring out all the brushes tonight. I just brought out the two for when you're working at home. Um, there are a hundred other brushes for a hundred other reasons. I did not bring those to you tonight. At Hands to Boss, we always offer tooth brushing. And this is the exact toothpaste that we use. This is it, guys. It's not any, this is not organic. As you know, most of our products that we use on your dogs are organic. They are safe for the humans, that our hands are in them all day, and they are safe for your dog's skin. All our products are made in America and sourced in America. So if anything were to happen, your veterinarian and or you could go right on the website of our products and look at their ingredients, or we could send it over to your veterinarian because all our products and ingredients are made and sourced in America. 
our toothbrushes. Our toothbrushes are human toothbrushes. We are not using special dog toothbrushes. Why? Why, you ask? And if you come into Hands to Paws and you had your dog's teeth brush and you would like a toothbrush home, please just ask. Hi, Marie. How are you? Please ask Marie or Brittany, Haley or Lindsay, any of the young ladies at the front desk for a toothbrush. They will walk directly in the back and they will bring you a toothbrush in a sealed plastic contain, uh, bat package, just like your dentist would. Why, you say? Well, in the grooming salons that I have worked in the past, that has not been the case. Every dog gets a brand new out of the package toothbrush. And after their teeth are brushed, we throw it away. If you want one as the owner, we're happy to give you one. We give you a brand new one in plastic. So please feel free to ask. A lot of people don't want them. So we just stopped um, volunteering them and giving them out. We used to give them out with everybody if they got their dog's teeth brushed. Most people just are getting their teeth brushed when they're coming into the salon and don't want them. But if you do, please just ask. We are very sanitary when it comes to the toothbrushes. The toothpaste is not organic. However, it is enzymatic. You don't really need, I know the whole product industry is going to go cringe right now. You don't really need a toothbrush when you're brushing a dog's teeth. You really can take that toothpaste, put it on your finger and get it on the back of your dogs up by their gum line and their back canines and move it up forward so that you're on the gum line. What it is doing, even if your dog needs dental care, what it is doing, it is breaking down the enzymes just like it would on a human being. And that bacteria is being loosened and it is going into the digestive tract to be killed. Now, what should happen after your dog has their teeth brushed, whether by you at home with a dog toothbrush, which I'm going to show you. Let me show you. So there's this is like a little finger brush. And, you know, if you teach your dog to do this, they love it. When should their teeth be brushed? Every day. Every day. Most people get their dog's teeth brushed when they go to the salon. However, are you asking me? I'm telling you every day. Do I brush my dog's teeth every day? Absolutely not. Should I? Absolutely. Can you see me lining up my three dogs, two cattle dogs and a Perry Bordy mix in the morning on my way to work, telling him to get their teeth brushed? It's not. Uh, morning plans. So they definitely get their teeth brushed every time they go to the salon. They get a full swag pack, which is our upgraded package. They get the full the full nine yards, and they have three different stylists because they have three different personalities. So don't think I can cut my own dog's nails either. So, but when you should you be doing it every day? If you have one dog it's easy. If you have two little dogs, it's easy. You start getting more multiple dogs, it definitely becomes more difficult. But every time they come in, they should have their teeth done. Do you notice a huge difference? Not always. Is that bacteria still being broken down and going into their digestive tract? Every time. Should your dog go home and drink a little bit more water to flush out that bacteria? Every time. Every single time. So we are using a regular toothbrush, just like your dentist would, to give you to brush your teeth. We are taking it, we are throwing it away, and this is the exact toothpaste. We use it hands to paws, and if you're interested in getting that tonight, jump on our Facebook, jump right on our store, okay? So, and it's a good time to brush your teeth. You can brush your teeth when they're getting a bath. You can brush their teeth when um, you get home, before you go to work, whenever you have time to do it. And again, I want to say this again. If you don't have a toothbrush, you have your finger and you're just getting up here on your dog's gum lines. Okay? Up here. It's enzymatic and it'll start working on its own. So you can be super fancy or not. All right? 
just like with your brushes. I recommend this brush. This brush is about $50. Did I ask you to buy three of these? No. They make a bigger version of this too. I happen to like the small version. But if I had very big hands, if I were a male stylist, I absolutely might want the bigger version of this. I tend to like this. My smaller hands. I'm very light-handed. Um, so, but this brush, you don't have to buy three, buy one. This brush, I recommend you buy like three. It's your dematting brush, but it's good for everyday brushing too. It's an inexpensive, wonderful all-around brush. Okay, your toothpaste. And of course, I'm going to, this is called a Bowie comb. At the very end of this, you're going to comb your dog's skin out. Well, that's kind of cool, right? Hey. All right. I love the conversation going on in chat. That's great. <clears throat> so there was the Chris Christensen brush, the one I just showed you, the larger one. Okay. It's the same exact brush, Chris Christensen, and it is the larger version of the brush that I just showed you. And over there in the corner is a curry brush. Now, I love me some curry. I happen to live, hands to paws, I call us very affectionately the home. I affectionately call us the home of groom style swag. What's up, dog? where we are the doodle capital of the world because we live right next to Ocala that is the horse capital of the world. True story. And this is a curry brush. And anybody that's ever dealt with, worked around, or loves horses should know what a curry brush is because this is what they use on the horses. And to get the excess hair off and to clean the horse. Walks on walks off, wax on, wax off. In a grooming salon, I didn't bring a curry brush home with me tonight. It is wonderful for double coat dogs or getting to the skin for cleanliness. So remember we were talking about those baths, face first, face safe shampoo, nose back first, dirt and oil. Well, you can take that curry brush and scrub all your product into the dog's skin. What that does is, it stimulates oxygen. It stimulates the skin. It loosens coat. So it loosens the hair. So now this is now you've loosened the coat. You do your second bath. You've used your curry brush. You've got all your product right to the skin. So your product is touching exactly what it's supposed to touch, which is the skin, which is why I believe it's so important that it's organic and it's healthy for your dog, right? You don't want, skin is your number one organ. Skin is the biggest organ on the body. It is the biggest organ on your dog's body. I personally don't want anything going into my skin that I wouldn't want going into the dog's skin, right? So the better the product, the less dyes, the less chemicals, the better it is for your dog. Does that make sense? Then you're going to use that product that you got that, that curry brush right to the skin and you loosened up that hair. Now, if you have knots, mats, which what's a mat? A mat's a knot. If the dog has knots, the skin can't breathe. You're going to take this, where's to the skin? Just like your head, scalp out from the skin out, not the top part, from the skin out out. You're going to brush the dog and loosen it up. Okay. Ooh, you're doing such a good job. I'm so proud of you. Curry brush. You can find the curry brush on the store. I think if not, just type in curry brush and you're going to get one of these. And I want to tell you they're between 10 and $12. You know, it kills me to say that they used to be like $3. Things have gone up, guys. Things have gone up. Okay. Are you learning? Are you having fun? Things making sense? 
right? Is it under coat care? It's coat care. Why do stylists and groomers charge so much? Because it's very time and labor intensive. It's very, and we have to treat your babies like they, so they have a wonderful, wonderful experience, right? And they're each lovely little individuals. All right. So now you have done so well. You have your Chris Christensen brushes. You have your comb. This is called a Bowie comb. I don't know if you can see that. It's only because I'm a little snooty about my equipment. This Bowie comb is anywhere from $50 to $70. And it's curved. Can you see that? My camera. Can you see that that's curved? On the store, we have put up regular Greyhound combs that are straight. But can you see that? And I like this because I do a lot of scissor work and I can fluff the dog and it's easy in my hand. Can you see that? And I need this comb to know that I got all those knots or mats out. Okay, you're never doing the dog a service. If the dog has knots and mats in there, it goes up again. This even has hair in it. Dear Lord. Okay. It's used every day. Love my equipment. Tools rule. Tools rule. So now your dog is bathed. You've taken a towel. You've done all the lovey-dovey stuff with the towel, all the favorite parts. I recommend you have a slip lead or a leash on your dog at this point, because if your dog likes to run around and rub his face and roll and do all these things because he's wet, he can create knots and mats. And what are knots and mats? Knots and mats can be to the skin and we don't want to get the dog shaved down and the skin can't breathe and if we don't have healthy skin we don't have a healthy coat and then we're spending a lot of money at the veterinarian and getting our dog shaved let's not do that it's yucky so now we're going to have our dog on a leash we're going to have our dog on a slip lead which is basically you know the same leash that your vet or your stylist or groomer would give you. And if you have a doodle or a poodle or a drop coat or a long coat dog or a short coat dog that you don't want wet because moisture feeds bacteria. So what? Moisture feeds bacteria. So if you live in a climate like I do in Florida, that's not really what we want to do is leave our dog wet. Fortunately here, if it's a bright sunny day, we probably can send them outside and they'll be dry in two minutes. But if we have coat, we want to take care of that coat. So now this is a very similar dryer that we would use in the salon. And this dryer would be perfect for our little doggy example, Precious because it's very quiet and it's almost like a hair dryer, but it goes right up to their face and it's very sweet to them. Or if it's an older dog, maybe a 16 year old dog, a 12 year old dog, a dog that has um, high sensitivity. Let's say they've had, remember I used the word association in the beginning. Let's say they've had some negative experiences. So they have negative association with the dryer. This one is just wonderful. It's very quiet. It's not, it, I don't believe they're very expensive. I can't really give you the price range right now, but I'm going to tell you, let me do this safely. I believe it is under $50. This is a single spray dryer. It'll dry your dog. It will help separate that coat. You want to be brushing the dog. Everything's about brushing. While you're drying the dog with one of these professional dryers, which you can find right on our store, go right on our Facebook store, and these dryers are there and waiting for you. You can, if you have a pool, do you have a lab? Do you have a doodle? Do you have a poodle? Do you have a um, setter? Will you have a swimmer? Does your dog like to swim? 
this is what you need. Your dog could be short haired and this is what you need. So it's a little noisy. I always recommend the ones that have a variable button so you can lower it and turn it up. And if you have a dog that you're trying to maintain code on, you are going to write me and say, Aw, oh, Precious always has a super a spa day with Miss Claudia. I love all the dogs. I love Precious and I just love the dogs. From my heart, guys, from my heart. So this is going to change your game. This is just going to change your game. The other part of that game change is just patience. Now listen, grooming is such a loving, wonderful, bonding things to do. And I know at Hands to Paws, we had to raise our prices because we have to keep up with everything else that's going on. I know that I've had customers that would come in every three and four weeks that have changed their schedules to every eight weeks. We don't want the dogs not to receive the best. You can't always do at home what you can do in a grooming salon. I can't give you 30 years of experience in one live, but I can give you tips and tricks to help you and help your dog at home. Okay. And I cannot discourage you ever from doing the most bonding process ever, which is who doesn't love to give their dog a bath. Now, as far as nails, I personally bring my dog to the groomer. I can do your dog's nails all day. My dog, however, gives me a hard time. So this is the dryer. Jump on our store. After you have dried the dog, after you have finished drying the dog, brushing the dog while you're drying them, looking at their skin, making sure there's no mats or knots. You want to make sure you have, mine is called a Bowie comb. So if you want what I have, it's called a Bowie comb. By the way, I'm a big David Bowie fan. So I never forget the name of this comb. Bowie. That's right. B-O-W-I-E. As in Bowie. So this is a Bowie comb. And in my Bowie comb is curved. But on our store, we have greyhounds. Okay? You can spend on a good comb. You can spend anywhere from $25 to $100. Just depends on what you like. My Bowie comb is probably in the upwards of between 50 and 70. There we go. Oh, I have another brush to show you here, guys. I'm sorry I brought home. I brought this one. So this is a great brush. It comes in pink, blue, and red, I think. If you go to any dog shows, you will always see these brushes. It is a Madden. It is a Madden brush. Okay. So it has, see how nice and long and beautiful those pins are? Can you see those beautiful long pins? Please don't buy a brush with little tiny itty bitty short pins and expect to get everything out. Can you see that? And this Madden, these guys are great. I absolutely love these brushes. And they're always at the shows. And again, they come in different um Uh, pins, different pin types. Blah. So for a softer pin, a more coarse pin, and a much harder pin. So there you can buy three of them. There's pink, there's blue, there's purple, and there's red. But another great, great brush. I love this brush when I am blow drying a dog or I am finishing a dog. Just love it. And again, like I showed you the dematting brush, you would hold this brush similar and then kind of on a side so you could get the full effect of the pin. But look at those beautiful pins. These dogs, these brushes are always showed, uh, sold at the shows. Madden, you can get them at the store and they have um, different, uh, different pin types. Ah, the dreaded nails. The dreaded, the dreaded, the dreaded nails. 
So I do have streams on nails because I'm not going to go through all the behaviors of nails tonight. You can get these nail clippers on the store. Now, these nail clippers that I have here, they don't happen to have it. But let me give you a little trick that most people, it's funny, I've talked to groomers who've been stylists for years and they didn't even know this. This, this nail clipper doesn't have it. However, if you go on the store and you see an orange set of nail clippers, um, they are, they have a stopper. So it's this little piece right here and it folds up. So it stops you from going too far on the dog's nails. All right. So it stops you and it's a little stopper on the end of the nail clipper. So my recommendation to you is if you have a dog at home and you're trying to do their nails, one is make sure they're in a very, very comfortable position. Two is don't be afraid of treating your dog while you're doing their nails. Three is don't fight, don't fight the dog. And four, just take a little bit off at a time, okay? If your dog jerks, stop. And if you're teaching your dog how to hold their foot, when you're holding their foot, Make sure you're pushing on the webbing of their feet in between the webbing. You're pushing under their pad to separate their feet. So you're giving them all the pressures you would as if you were doing their nails. Okay. Then you're going to take your nail clipper, use the stopper. This one doesn't have it, but when you go to the store and you see them, look for one that has a stopper and you're just going to take a little bit off at a time. All right. If you start getting into a battle with your dog, please, if you're in um, Citrus County area, come to Hands to Paws, walk in nails all day, every day. And of course, we have Muddy Monday, where it is always $3 off nails, which is great. If you have multiple dogs, it's like getting a dog for free. The nail has a vein in it. It's called a quick. And that quick is a live living vein with lots of blood vessels in it. And anybody that has ever made their dog bleed knows exactly what I'm talking about. One of the reasons we grind nails is because when a dog comes in, their nails are very sharp. When we cut the nail with a regular nail clipper, your nail is actually sharper. It's jagged and can cause a lot more damage if that dog jumps on you. So we like to round them out with a grinder. Now, you can go, you can go on the store and the grinders are available. You've seen these, you can buy these at your local Walmart. You can buy them at your local corporate America pet stores. They have a paw print on here and they're about $30 more than they are at Walmart. True story that was packaged for a dog with a paw print. This is a diamond head on here. You can also put those in at the store. It's a type of, it just, it doesn't go bad basically, okay? And this rounds out your dog's nails. It can scare a dog. Okay, and it has some vibration. So if a dog, such as Precious, who is having back issues, she might find that sensitive. She might not like that. So I know what we say is we will cut and grind nails as long as your dog allows. Sometimes a dog will only allow this. Sometimes a dog will only allow this. Sometimes we will only do this. And sometimes if they're very long, we will cut them first and then do this. This seems at home to be the hardest thing to accomplish. Not just for you. Did I mention all three of my dogs have different stylists and all three of my dogs are brought in for nails because they are my babies and they know what triggers me. And I don't seem to have the same amount of patience for my own beloveds as I do the customer's dogs. So how do I avoid that? I don't fight. I don't like to fight. I just don't like it. So I bring my dogs in. But if you're practicing at home and you're learning, 
please jump and go look for on the live on how to do nails. Otherwise, buy a nail clipper with a stopper so you have a safe gauge to not hit that vein. Okay, so there would be a stopper there. Remember, look for it on the back of your nail slippers. Most people don't even know what it's there for. And then I, especially if it's a puppy, like to take a grinder and hold it up against a dog so that they can feel the vibration on their body before I take it and round it out. And then, of course, on the actual nail videos, I talk about the placement of the body for the comfort of the dog so that you're not in a battle with your baby. Because the last thing we want to do is battle. Burt's Bee. I just love Burt's Bee. I recommend Burt's Bee shampoo. You can buy it in any local drugstore. You can buy it at the supermarket. You can go on our store and get Burt's Bee. It is an oil-based healthy shampoo. It does not strip your dog's oils from their coats. So if you like to bathe a lot, let's say you're super clean and you have a super sensitive nose, or your partner or spouse has a super sensitive nose, you can bathe two times a day in Burt's Bee. I won't, don't actually recommend you bathe your dog two times a day. But let's say there's days like that if you have a puppy, that that actually happens. So, let me see. I'm getting blown up here on the call. Hello, this is a prepaid call from an inmate. Okay, so Burt's Bee. So Burt's Bee's ear cleaner is wonderful. And I'm also going to recommend a the product we use, which is called Soothe. My phone is not right. I'm doing a live. So can you call me back in like 30 minutes? Because I had an answer because I saw you were blowing me up. Yes, but can you call me back? Love you, bye. So you got to make sure everybody knows you're safe, right? Um, not answering the phone. So, okay. So Burt's Bee is a wonderful ear cleaner for home. It is safe. It's going to be soothing to your dog's ear. It is wonderful. And I'm going to recommend you take cotton and you wipe it out. Now, remember in the beginning I said... We don't know if you have, your dog has an ear infection until they're symptomatic. We don't know. We have no way of knowing. One thing I do know is that at Hands to Paws, we use organic products. The product we use in the ear is not fully organic. It has chlorhexidine in it. And what does chlorhexidine do? It helps kill, kill bacteria. And it also is an anti-inflammatory so that whether the dog has an ear issue or doesn't have an ear issue, when we clean their ears, it just makes them feel good. So we at Hands to Paws don't have dogs that are doing this when we're cleaning their ears. Oh, God, Jesus. I, it also does not have alcohol in it, I believe. Or if it does have alcohol, it has just a little tiny percent. And that is because we want the dog's ear canal to feel fantastic because I have no way of knowing if your dog is starting, is in an act of, has had bacteria in their ear, has had chronic ear infections, and we never want them to be uncomfortable. So that is what we use. Burt's Bee is an oil base, so it's also going to be very soothing. And I'm always going to tell you with ears, ear health is so important. If you have an unhealthy ear and that ear has bacteria, it is going back into your dog's bloodstream stream and it is causing secondary skin problems so often at hands to pause i will see a dog come in and they have a lot of ear issues and i see skin issues and i will recommend that they go to their veterinarian and that once that ear is cleared out that skin is going to just start to clear out so if your dog has ear infections and skin problems and that stinky smell that is something that you 
definitely want to be aware of. Getting tips, getting all those tips and trips, tricks, all the basics for your home. Okay, the last are the combs that we talked about. Remember, I have the Bowie comb. Those are Greyhound combs and the little purple comb. I said it in the beginning of the video, fleas. Fleas are disgusting. And they're warriors. They just don't want to die. Or ticks, terrible. So this is a flea comb. So after, especially if you're a short-haired dog or they're fleas, remember we discussed how to keep the fleas away from the face. Face safe. Safe for the face. That is the flea comb that you can go by their eyes and scoop out and it'll literally catch the fleas. You can go down here by their nose. You can go by their ears. And if they have any little critters, that'll catch them. Okay, super important. Where can you get it? Jump on our store, guys. Jump on. All right. Well, it looks like we've had a really good chat. And if I didn't see any comments, sometimes I don't see them. I don't know why until later i hope that you got lots of tips and tricks and that you enjoy tonight's live stream where um every other week we will be doing paid as it gets closer and we're getting ready for christmas and i hope you got useful information and i hope you'll join me again and i want to thank everybody for joining me don't forget, put my equipment away because I have to bring it to work tomorrow. Um, don't forget to get a hold of us. Let us give us some feedback. Give us some thumbs up. Give them some likes. Pick up some Google reviews. Visit our store. Let me know if you're enjoying them. Let me know. I want to know what you want to know. So if you have a subject matter that you want me to talk about, let me know. I'll be happy to do a live stream on it. And um, I will get back on YouTube and Rumble, Rumble Rants, where we can talk all things. And YouTube, where we talk all things dog. What's up, dog? And um, we can finish up on some of the cases over there, too. That's just a lot of fun. I just haven't had a lot of time to spend over there. But I do hope you're enjoying this. I hope you got all the tips and tricks. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you want to hear about, and I am happy to accommodate. This is Claudia from Hands to Paws, home of groom and style and swag, from YouTube, from What's Up Dog, now on Rumble, now on Instagram, now with the store. You can check out our lives on our webpage, handstopawsgrooming.com. Thank you, Brandon. Excellent job, and thank you to the Hands to Paws team. Ladies and gentlemen, you are amazing. Your dedication to the dogs is awesome. I am proud of you and I am proud of our new team members. And I am excited for the holidays. And speaking of holidays, book your appointment online, call the salon. Don't have any hesitation about booking early. All right, guys, have a wonderful night. And I'm looking forward to two weeks from tonight, seeing you again. Thanks, guys.